Hi, I'm Katie Brickner from Scholastic Art Magazine. I'm here at the Museum of Modern Art in New York City. Today, we're going to visit an exhibit about Henri Matisse and his cutouts. Let's go. I'm pleased to introduce Jody Hauptman and Samantha Friedman, two of the curators of this exhibition. So tell me about Matisse. Well, Matisse is one of the great artists of the 20th century. Matisse built his pictures out of color, starting in the earliest years of his career with very small brush strokes and constructing these kind of quivering, bouncy pictures to moving to flat planes of color. And finally, at the end of his life, turning to cut paper as a new and radical medium. So think about him taking a sheet of painted paper and cutting into it with scissors, and that cut actually makes a line. And so he was able to finally join color and line into something he described as cutting into vivid color. But at the same time, that act represented a new invention, a new form of making art. So in that sense, it was a radical break from the past. Matisse made this work The Fall of Icarus in 1943, at the very start of his work with cut paper. The title refers to a character in Greek mythology, Icarus, who had wax wings and flew too close to the sun. The wings melted and he fell to earth. This idea of flying is very important for Matisse in his work with cut paper. He talks about the experience of cutting as feeling like flying. He's really gliding through the paper. What's so fantastic about this work is that it retains its original pins. You can see them here in the yellow bursts of light uh, and one pin right in Icarus's heart. He would use the pins uh, to secure the pieces of paper in an arrangement and then to unpin them and change the arrangement as he saw fit. Matisse actually used pins on all of his cutouts, but most of them uh, were mounted later with glue. The pins were removed and the pieces of paper were secured. Uh, so this is one of the rare works that retains its original pins. In January 1952, Matisse was commissioned by Life magazine to make a stained glass that would be installed in the Time Life building in Rockefeller Center. And what we have behind me is a maquette or a design for a stained glass window and the window next to me. He began the project with cut paper. And one of the interesting things about that is that he had to think about how the cut paper would evoke the um, illumination of stained glass. So the colors of that cut paper had to give him the sense of light moving through glass. In making this project, he had the collaboration of a stained glass maker named Paul Boney. He worked with a range of stained glass, and we have examples of those colors in the exhibition. But we also have the tracing that Paul Boney made. What he came up with was almost like a puzzle, where you see the different forms interlocking, and each one would get its own piece of glass that would then be assembled with the leading in the stained glass that you see behind me. Here we are in front of the sheaf from 1953, one of Matisse's great late works. It's a monumental work, and it shows him moving from the smaller scale of the late 40s and early 50s to these more monumental, expansive works. In making the cutouts, Matisse used a gouache um, that was made by the Linnell Company, and gouache is a water-based matte pigment. And he would have his assistants paint white paper with these gouaches. And each assistant, of course, had their own style of painting. Some painted the color more densely, some more lightly. So when you look at the cutouts, you can actually see that different kind of personality of the individual painter. One of the things really to notice is the range within a particular color. So you see more than one green or more than one orange. We know, for example, that Matisse had, could choose from as many as 17 different oranges. And so the relationships of those different oranges or those different greens is very important in the cutouts and something to really pay attention to as you look through all of these works. Matisse made this large-scale cutout, the snail, in 1953. But rather than depicting a snail or really showing the animal of the snail, he captured the essential nature of its form in the spiral of these cut sheets of colored paper. 
Though the cutouts began on a small scale, by the end of his life, Matisse was creating cutouts that expanded and covered his studio walls. So a work like The Snail, even though it depicts or refers to a very small animal, as you can see behind me, is a really grand scale work. Matisse had another name for this work, which was the chromatic composition. And chromatic, of course, refers to color. So at the same time that he's referring to the form of a snail's shell or that great spiral shape, he's also really creating a balance of colors, a set of harmonies and contrasts. This has been a wonderful tour, but I have one more question. Why would you say that Matisse's cutouts are still important today? Matisse made these works in the 1940s and 1950s, but at the time what he was doing was so radical that they still resonate today and they look incredibly fresh. But this idea that he was inserting change into the process of his work, that he was pinning and unpinning, constantly rearranging these shapes, living in and among them as they grew and spread on his studio walls, I think is incredibly fresh. It breaks down the boundaries between art and life in a way that artists are constantly thinking about even today. And I think another lesson of, of the cutouts is about invention. Matisse was really at the end of his life. Um, he had an amazing career, but he didn't rest on his laurels. He kept inventing, he kept pushing for something new, and that act of uh, risk-taking and reaching for something new is something I think that all of us can learn from.